Welcome everyone. We are going to be looking at Destiny Estimator um, alternates today. This is um, a feature that's going to be coming up in our PPE beta testing. So if you are interested, uh, again, in the email I send out today with the recording, you can sign up for um, that PPE interest so you can actually get your hands on the beta testing before it goes live um, after that. So John, everyone is dying to see and look at alternates. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. So first thing we're going to run through is just some changes to the layout, and then we're going to get into the actual uh, means of how it's going to work. So the first thing you're going to see is when you open mm -hmm. Estimator, you're going to have the estimate window just like you normally would. But you're going to see now it's going to have a couple of ribbons. One is for your base estimate and one is for your alternates piece. And we'll get into exactly how that functions in just a moment. Uh, a couple other changes. The layout uh, for the estimate view, you can see that that has moved and it's now in the ribbon up above uh, the estimate itself. So it allows you to keep a little more consistency in terms of how that layout looks as you're working through it. A couple other things you can see that in the quick access ribbon up at the top, you can now add uh, additional buttons up there. So we have the save and refresh by default, but if you wanna add additional uh, buttons to that quick access ribbon, you can see you can right click and hit add to quick access toolbar, and then it's gonna add a new icon up in that top uh, bar of your window. The reason that is important is because now we can collapse that ribbon down so that it has a more uh, seamless view, you're allowed to see a little more screen real estate and have that uh, occupied by the estimate itself. Another piece is this search. We now have this uh, magnifying glass icon. You can click on search and you can find anything in your estimate using that uh, text field. Okay, so alternates. Uh, current workflow that we have, uh, it's using WBS properties, so you have to put in an alternate name and an alternate status. Um, and then your reports and dashboards can filter off of that. We're gonna change the way that that works pretty substantially. So base estimate now is gonna work just like you guys have always used. Uh, any line items you add, you can see additional WBS properties down in your cost information view, and you can add and filter uh, and group by those WBS properties in your estimate view itself. Now, if you wanna go into the alternates, this is a whole new interface here. Um, first thing you're gonna see Sorry, I had the wrong window up, but first thing you're gonna see is the alternates view. Uh, what this is going to do is basically show you the list of alternates that you can add to the estimate. So these are all the active alternates I have. If I wanted to add a new alternate, I would just click add alternate up here. It brings up a new one I can put in as a test alternate in here. And then I can assign it a number Now it's going to group and sort by that number because that's what I have sorted by. So now my new test alternate, there's a couple other fields that are going to come up. One is a description, so I can write in a test description. Description in there. There's also some other uh, columns and uh, ways you can group and sort by, uh, which I'll show you here in this context menu. So first thing, if I go to the settings tab, what this does is it gives me, by default, we have given every alternate in your estimate three custom properties that you can use to group and uh, filter uh, and sort your estimates uh, in the alternate view. So first one, I've already changed to a category column and I've added the VE and a wish list idea. If you add, you can add as many of these categories as you want. And again, you could have two other columns that you would have in there. So I wanted to go in and view those. I would hit the uh, kind of three dashes over on the far right side, go in and I can add that category column if I wanted. So now you can see I've designated the first one as a VE and the second, uh, the third one down here is a wish list item. So those are ideas that you can use to, to group your estimates or group your alternates. The big thing on the alternate uh, homepage that you want to look at is this status bar over here. So everything by default when you add it, it's going to have this pending uh, status. You want to change that from pending to accepted you just click the accepted button now it's going to be included on the total projects uh, on the project totals for your cost so uh, one thing i forgot to hit earlier at the bottom you're going to see base estimate alternates and then you're going to be able to see the costs total cost for your project this is going to include everything that's been accepted 
you can see I've got accepted alternates here. And it's going to add that to my totals for the project. So if I change this back to pending, you're going to see that the total project totals update down at the bottom accordingly. All right, so now the actual estimate of the alternate itself, you would just click that open icon at the far right of the screen. It's going to bring up a whole new estimate page. This is solely tied to this alternate. So every line item that's on this screen right now is only containing this alternate. And you can see which alternate you're in by this bar up at the top that tells you uh, the name and all the descriptive uh, properties you put onto that alternate. So I go into any of the other ones. You can see that all these line items are attached just to this alternate. Okay, the last piece is uh, probably the most important, in my opinion, um, the fee table. The fee table is going to have a significant change in the way it works and operates. Uh, the first part is the base estimate. This is where your base estimate fees are built. You build them on this right-hand pane the same way you would in Estimator currently. The key part, though, is whenever you go down to the alternates themselves, you'll see that I can choose, choose what type of fee I'm going to be charging on this job. So in this case, everything's going to default to the base. But if I want to make this into a custom fee, I can just hit that drop down to custom, and then I can turn fees on or off or I can add additional fees if I wanna have additional fees specific to this. So same way that uh, you all add, add a fee in a base estimate, you can make it off of any of the totals, you can change percentages, but the key part is that this fee, this fee structure and these fees are only gonna be attached to that single alternate. So if I go to any other alternate, you're not gonna see that additional fee on any of them. So I think that's gonna be a pretty powerful tool to allow you to customize your fees on each individual uh, alternate and uh, make sure that your base fees also are always calculating just on what you want it to. So this, this I think is gonna be a big change for us and uh, help make everyone's lives a little bit easier in terms of reporting. So uh, last piece, um, reporting, since I touched on that, uh, we are going to have changes to the reporting. Uh, we will have to go to the BEC standard reports that we published recently. Uh, the, the new uh, BEC standards will report out the alternates in this new uh, format, in this new breakdown. The existing reports that you have currently will continue working, uh, but they will only work on the base estimate window. So whatever is shown in your base estimate, it will still pull that data out and it will report off of that, but you will not be able to use the new alternates with your existing reports. You will have to adopt the new standards, uh, and you'll, we will send those out, and you can rebrand them to, to your uh, specific content, uh, logos, colors, things like that. Uh, but the, uh, the idea is that as we update functionality in here, those reports would then be updated, and you could use them with the new functionality specifically around these alternates right now. So uh, dashboards, before I show the actual reports, uh, dashboards are going to work largely the same as what they have always. The big difference is going to be, uh, again, in the, the fees tables themselves. Um, now we can pull direct fees for the specific alternate that we're looking at. And also on the summary, the summaries are going to essentially show every uh, base bid item and the accepted alternates will be included in the dashboard calculations. So if you see my job right here is 53,656 for direct costs. If I go back to my alternates, and I change this from accepted to pending. So I've taken that those dollars out. Now you'll see that my deductive alternate has not uh, been included anymore, and now it's at the 53,685. So uh, dashboards will work primarily similarly the same way that you have always, uh, but we do have some back of house. Uh, additional work in terms of getting additional alternate fees and uh, pulling the alternate summary in. It's working a little bit differently. All right, so the last piece, reports. We're going to go through that, show how the reports are going to look. So if I go in and I want to print a standard owner's report, actually, let me go back and accept these alternates in here just so that they will show on the reports properly. Okay, so if I go back and I hit I'm going to run this report with the accepted alternates. Uh, the, the key part of this is that the report will essentially break the alternates out. Uh, so you'll still get a project total, 
the report will still work in the same manner as base estimate uh, with alternates below it. And you'll, you'll have the option to either roll those up as uh, lump sums or you can show the detail uh, for the direct costs and you could also do the same with the fees. I'll show you how that works here right now. Okay, so you're gonna have a lot of options here on the right-hand side. Let's say I wanna group by system and then I'm gonna group by uniform at level two. Uh, the big thing is this include alternates button or, or drop down, I should say. I'm gonna say, yes, I want to include the alternates. And then down below, when you get down in the detail portion of the estimate, do I wanna include the alternate details? So I'm just gonna say yes. And then I'm not gonna roll those fees up just to show how that's gonna look on the, on the report. Okay, so you can see now I've got the base estimate cost shown here, and then I've got my alternate costs uh, added in down here as well. And then if I go to the bottom of the report, where the alternates are actually broken out, you can see the individual pieces. So I see my O2 food service equipment alternate, I can see the detail, and I can see the individual fees attached to that. So if I did decide I wanted to roll that up and not display that fee structure, again, same front sheet looks the exact same, and then if I roll down to the very bottom, now I just see the line item for the direct cost and my indirects or my fees are all rolled up into a single lump sum rather than shown in detail. Okay, so that's how the reports work. Uh, a couple other notes that we wanna make sure we, we look at on here. Um, when you have an accepted alternate, uh, sometimes you'll, you'll want to accept an alternate. So I hit the wrong button, sorry. Then. Let's say I wanna accept this athletic equipment alternate and I wanna include all of that uh, in the base bid now Going forward, I can then choose to close this out. So whenever you click on this uh, icon on the far left of the alternate screen, you get two options that pop up. Is one is a close out and one is delete. The close out is the one you're probably gonna be using most often. Uh, so whenever I hit close out, it's gonna give me two options again of close out and push to base estimate or just close it out and just leave it as a lump sum. If I close out and push to base estimate, you're gonna see these line items that I've got in here. So right now I've got all these division E, uh, uniform at level E10, E20, and F10. I've got all these costs that are currently in my alternate, but they're not in my base estimate. So if I go in and I, hit, I wanna close that out and push the base estimate, now it's effectively um, incorporating those and it's gonna push those to the base estimate. And there's gonna be a tag on the closed out items that tells me when uh, I've accepted it. So if I wanted to say, for example, say I've accepted all these in a meeting, I could add a tag there uh, with the meeting date or accepted by some person on the owner's side, something like that. Okay, so now I've closed out that alternate three. Now if I go back up to my base estimate, And you can see all of the equipment costs that I had in there are now included in the base estimate. That's effectively how you're going to accept an alternate, be able to push it into your estimate for future versions of the estimate or for an accounting report. If you wanna push all your accepted alternates into the, um, into the base estimate, you can then push those costs over. Uh, the only caveat to this, uh, when you push these base estimate costs or these costs into the base estimate, it will pull on to the base estimate fees. So if you have some custom fees, uh, the workflow we're gonna recommend for now is just keep this as the accepted items and keep them in the accepted category in your alternates uh, area. And you can keep those custom fees through the life of the project. And again, like we said, we can report out on that and we can also uh, show that in your dashboards with the all, um, custom fees that you have attached to that. I believe that is all I have uh, to show for now. Um, if you wanted to uh, have any questions or open it up to questions, Julie, I'm uh, happy to answer what I can. Awesome. Well, um, I do have quite a few questions coming in. And if you have not yet submitted your questions, please do so in the question portion of GoToWebinar. Um, so first question that has come in and maybe, uh, they looked away for just a second, but let's say that you just opened up Estimator. How do you get the pop-up, how do you get to the pop-up view of alternates? Okay, good question. 
the uh, by default, the first view, I'm going to go back to the, the base view, which has the standard ribbon that we usually have. Uh, the estimate window here, that when you go to that estimate window, at the bottom, there's just going to be this additional ribbon or bar that uh, is now your alternate section. So you would just click on that ribbon and it would open up the alternates piece. Simple enough. Um, okay, the next question I have is when you put in a number for alternate, so in that um, second, third column, so you have status, number, name, mm -hmm. can you put text and numbers or is it just numbers that you can put in that field? Yeah, it's it's essentially just a text field. So if I wanted to say like it was 01A, I could do that. If you uh, choose not to use the number and just use the names, you don't have to put anything in this field. Uh, but yeah, you can put in text in there as well. Cool. Um, sorting, I will, the sorting could get, I mean, it's just like sorting text versus numbers in Excel, I would guess. Um, the sorting can get a little wonky if you end up doing, uh, you know, put an A in front, then it's going to go to the bottom because the numbers come first. Uh, so there are some things you're going to have to work through and figure out in terms of what your best uh, nomenclature is to, to sort the alternates in the way you want them. That's a good point, John. Um, all right, for the status drop down um, options, is that editable? Can they can a user add or rename a status? Uh, not in the current build, and uh, I don't know if that's going to be in the future development, but uh, for now, we're only going to have the accepted, pending, and rejected columns. If you have additional um, categories you want to use to, to help kind of define um, funding sources or something like that, that's where I would use these additional columns. So if you wanted to go in here and add, uh, you know, uh, this is, and if I could spell, that would help. So this is one that I used on my budget control logs a lot. I could say it's owner's contingency. I could add contractor's contingency. Or I could say it's a change order, you know, however you want to put that in. Uh, and this would allow you to have additional sorts outside of the pending uh, rejected and accepted columns. So again, you click on this columns over here, and then I could add uh, the funding source column, and then I can change those drop downs over here as much as I want. Great. Um, all right, we have we have a lot of questions coming in, John. Uh, do you have? Also, I do want to let everyone know if we're not able to get to your questions before the time that this event is up, we will follow up with you um, outside of the event. So don't worry that we will get your um, questions answered. So the next question I have is, do you have to be in the alternate cost details to add new line items to the alternate, or is it possible to be in the base estimate view, but still add or copy line items into an alternate? Great question. That is probably something I should have touched on the first time. Uh, yeah, so if you want to copy a line item, uh, there's a couple different things you can do. Um, let me just pick one at random here. All right, so if I take a line item in here and I want to move that to an alternate, Let's say I've taken it off and, oh, this is not a part of the base bid. It needs to be part of an alternate. I can actively move that into another, in back into the alternate if I want. So now it's going to remove it from the base bid. And it's going to, now you're going to see that line item in the alternate itself. So you can see that it added that cost in there. Okay, so that's moving a line item from the base to the, to the alternate. If I wanted to copy a line item, so in this case, I'm gonna copy this line item, I could just right click, copy line item, or I could use the control C uh, keyboard shortcut, go into the alternate, and then I can paste as an alternate line item. And it'll bring up the same dialog box we have in basic estimator uh, that allows you to change WBS properties if you want. But essentially, it's going to now push this line item and it's going to place it into that alternate state. Uh, this is what I did. Essentially, that workflow is what I did for this first uh, line item here. I copied the line item over and I just changed the quantity to a negative and then uh, revised uh, a second line item to be able to give a discounted cost. It's like we almost thought of everything. Um, <laughs> I, kid, I don't know about we thought of everything. We thought of a lot, but yeah. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah. 
So um, the, the big thing though is yes, if you're gonna add a line item to the estimate uh, or to the uh, estimate for a specific alternate, you do have to be in the actual estimate window for that alternate. So if I wanted to add a line item here, I have to click into it, then I can just double click a line item and you'll be able to see that it just adds in the same way it would an estimator now. Uh, one thing I forgot to note earlier is down here at the bottom in the cost information view, you can now see any line item that you have. Obviously you're in the alternate window, but if you do, uh, see down in the cost information view, you'll be able to see where it belongs to. So you'll be able to see the alternate. It's in base bid. So I got to go back out. Then I go back to my base estimate. And I pick a line item down here. You'll see now it says belongs to base estimate down in that CIV down at the bottom. So there's a lot of information right now that you're currently showing on the screen, John. And I had a question that came in. Um, can the base estimate window and the alternates window be dragged off on separate screens so that they can see everything at the same time? No, right now they are in the same, they're housed in the same window. So if I try to drag this off, it's not going to drag off, but I can drag the estimate window off separately if I wanted to. Um, so just like you would in standard estimator if I move that around. Um, but the base estimate and the alternate view uh, do have to be housed in the same same window. All right, the next question I have, um, do you have a report that we can choose to include pending and or rejected alternates? Yes, we do. So we will have an alternate summary report uh, and that essentially is going to give the same summary level information that we have here uh, and the detail information behind it. And I'll be honest, I have not tested against this estimate today, so hopefully it works. But uh, the idea is that it's just um, essentially it just looks like the standard report and then it has the alternates above and then you can go down and you can see the additional detail down below for each individual alternate. Great. Um, also, and it does been... include oh, the sorry. status. I'm sorry, that, I should have been clear about that. It does say what status each of the estimates or the alternates are on that front page. Cool. Um, we've had several people ask the same question, so I want to make sure that I answer it. The question is, when is this update going to be released? When When is it going to get into PPE? When is that going to be available? We are hoping to get it, um, this feature into um, our pre-production environment testing in January. Uh, if you have not already submitted your interest for PPE and you want to test out alternates in a testing environment, um, again, whenever I send out the recording of this video later today, there will be a link in there for you to um, express your interest. After we get through beta testing, the PPE um, testing, that's when our team will then get it ready to be released into um, production. If you're a hosted team member, that is a, um, an automatic uh, update to our hosted environment. If you're an on-prem customer, that will be an upload that you will need to do. We do not have a date yet for when it will go into production because of the unknowns around testing. So the more people and the users that were able to get into the PPE environment, um, the greater that whenever we do go to release, it will have been fully tested out and we can actually release it faster. So I do encourage everyone to, um, if you're interested in this, please get in there, beta test it, um, and work with our team to make sure it's something that you can use for your company and your projects. So I do want to clarify a couple things. Um, we are planning on rolling this out as a as a few waves. Um, so it will not be everyone gets it on day one. Uh, we will run, run through some different waves of, of implementation and rolling this out to the hosted clients. Um, so we're working, trying to get through that right now. And our customer success team, if you're meeting with us, uh, expect that question to be coming up over the next uh, couple months, just as we kind of figure out who's going to go first and who's going to be uh, in the second wave, third wave, those kind of things. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, okay, uh, more questions. Will the new alternates and estimator push, pull to, or pull from bid day? So the current plan uh, is that they will push to bid day. Um, the uh, our test environment is not mapped to, to my bid day so i can't really demonstrate that for you right at the moment but 
Um, the alternates do push to bid day. Uh, the only thing that we will not be able to, to link between the two as of right now is the status of the alternates. So if you are in bid day and accept an alternate, uh, when you pull back in, it will pull the value, but it will not update the status. So you'll have to manually do that in Estimator once you've accepted the alternate. Uh, but the dollar values will pull the same way as they do in bid day now, and the uh, selected subs and those kind of things will pull in as well. All right. Next question: uh, Will subtotals show up in the fee editor, like the base, like the base estimate fee editor? Uh, yes. If you set them up, they they will. So if I go in here and I just say I'm going to insert a total in here, I can have it either as a subtotal or a running total, and then uh, they will, you know, any base numbers I go into will pull that same uh, item in. Um, one thing I forgot to note earlier, but I'm going to make sure I show this to you. So let's say I go in here and I've screwed up my fees and I want to go in, I want to go back to base, uh, it will restore it. But if I go back into custom, it will uh, allow me to customize it again. It does not remember the previous custom fee structure you set up, uh, but this is going to be useful in a case where, uh, let's say I had 20 fees on here and I just go in and I just delete them all and, oh, that's not what I want to do. I made a mistake. Well, I can just go back, restore the base fees, and I can go back in, and now I can just go and turn a few of them off if I want. All right, next one. Um, how do the bond tables work in the alternates? Do they start at the at the first step, or do they pick up at the step where base bid falls? I believe right now they would be at the um, step where it's for that alternate specifically i'd have to test that i have not tested that personally but let's run through it right now so if i have a bond calculator it says over you know okay so i'm gonna say that's five percent 50% and that's at 10%. Okay. So that's in my base that I just added that bond in. Now, if I go down to these additional ones down here, so it is still showing at the first, uh, the first step of that bond because it's at that percentage. But that is definitely something we can look at and uh, see what we can do to help with that. 